Alright, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about our next cooldown. I said I was going to make this video in, I think, my second to last video, and I am making it now. This one's for after the 14th, so this is going to be from about the 14th till about the 17th. And after that time frame, I think we're going to have a big warm-up for the East, and that's going to kind of flip the pattern after that point. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description and the pinned comment as that'll take you to my social medias where you can find more exclusive content from Direct Weather. Anyway guys, let's get right into it. First half of this video we're going to be looking at the European model and then the second half we're going to be looking at the GFS. I must mention that I do agree more with the European on this one than the GFS, but I'm going to go ahead and show both. Now, looking at the European model, you can see starting out things on the 13th, we have cold temperatures there for the northwestern United States and the north central United States with a pretty decent ridge there for the east and the central, south central United States where, again, we have that kind of death ridge going on that I talked about in my previous video. You can check that out if you want to. That talks a lot about the warm-up for the central United States that's going on right now. But we're going to be talking about a cool down for the east and the northwest. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the 14th. And you start to see things move further south and further east, at least for that eastern half of the United States. In the west, we're talking about those cold temperatures moving further south and further south until eventually California and Nevada gets involved. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, I wanted to mention that a lot of people have been commenting on these videos and being like, it's still calling for the 80s on my 10-day forecast according to the Weather Channel, uh, all that sorts of stuff. You have to pay attention to how far below average I'm calling for you to be because in a lot of these lighter shades of blue on this map, you're still going to be in the 80s. You're only going to be two or three degrees below your average. So what's going to end up happening is if your average is 85, you're only going to go down to 83. So a lot of people are like, oh, that's not a cool down. Well, I'm not necessarily calling for the biggest, you know, amount of cold temperatures for you. The areas in the darker blues and greens, they're going to feel it a lot more and they're going to be about... <clears throat> about 7 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit below average on this map. It's, it's you know, obviously it's Celsius, so it's not going to be as big of a number. But that's how I feel about that. So a lot of people have been asking me and saying like, oh, you got this wrong. It's still in the 80s. There's there's hasn't been a big cooldown for me. And also people that aren't in the regions that I'm calling for it to happen. I've been commenting that too. I had somebody from North Carolina. I was not calling for a cooldown for North Carolina necessarily, or a big one at least. I was calling for average conditions. So I don't know what all that was about. But... Anyway, we're looking at our European model, and again, in the east, things are moving further south and further east, and then in the west, things are starting to creep further south. So we're going to move on again to the 15th, and you can see those colder temperatures for Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, into New England, New Jersey as well, Pennsylvania, eastern Pennsylvania especially. Uh, the biggest of the cool down here is for California, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and Nevada, actually. These are the cooler, most cool areas in, in the United States right now, comparatively to normal. And this is where you will feel the cool down the most as you're in the green shade. Again, you're four to seven degrees below average Celsius, which is going to be very, very noticeable. And we still have that death ridge going on for the four corner states, Wyoming, Texas. We're still very warm there. And then for kind of your southeastern United States, we're still warm by this point. Now on the 16th, you can see things again are continuing to move east in the eastern United States. New England is pretty cold by this point. In the darker shades of blue, again, you will notice that as you're going to be pretty far below average. If you're if you're if your average is 85 degrees, I know you're eight, probably 82 up there is your average by now in northern Maine, maybe even a little bit lower. So you're probably going to be in the mid 70s according to this model uh, or maybe even a little lower. So that's pretty good news. I'd consider that a cool down, but out there in the west though, northern California, northern Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Washington, Oregon, you're very far below average as far as temperatures are concerned in those greens and even some of those purples showing up those light light purples you're you're pretty far below average i mean you're you're seven to nine degrees below average celsius in some of those lighter shades there so very cold comparatively to normal i would say now we're going to go ahead and move on to the 17th and again things are kind of just continuing to move east by this point the east coast is slightly below normal as far as temperatures are concerned, and then Maine is pretty noticeable there. But again, you're not really going to notice this very much. It's going to be a slight cooldown that you might not even notice unless you know your averages and you're paying attention. 
And you can see that ridge is starting to move east by this point on the 17th. And that's why I said from the 14th through the 17th, because again, as we move on here, by the 18th, the warm temperatures have reached the east coast of the United States. And this is going to be the beginning of a new pattern, which is going to be a warm pattern in the east for at least a little bit. But the northwest, though, you're still pretty far below average. That's starting to creep back north again, at least as far below average temperatures are starting to creep north again. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our GFS model. And I agree more with the European model, I must say. So I think that's going to be the more accurate of the two here. But we are going to take a look at the GFS anyway. So on the 13th, you can see there is a southeast ridge there where we have warmer than average temperatures there from Virginia, Kentucky, Missouri, into Oklahoma and Texas. And anything further south or east than that, we are at least slightly above average as far as temperatures are concerned. And then in the northwest, you can see there is some below average temperatures, but really the north central United States are seeing the coldest temperatures comparatively, comparatively to normal by this point, 8 to 16 degrees below average for North Dakota by this point, so pretty far below average comparatively to normal. Also, the northeastern United States, we're all 4 to 8 degrees below average, so Massachusetts, southern Vermont, southern New Hampshire, New York, northern Pennsylvania, into Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, we're all pretty far below average according to the GFS. So on the 14th, you can see this starts to move east, just like the European model, where the furthest below average temperatures are again creeping their way east and south. New England, you're slightly below average by this point. You won't be noticing it too much on the 14th. And again, we have that cold temperatures in the west according to this model as well. So Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Northern California, we're all pretty far below average. And then we're going to move on to the 15th, starting to get much colder there in the western United States, and it creeps down to even southern California with the slightly below average temperatures. But Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, interior New England, we're all pretty far below average. Again, those four to eight degrees below average regions, that's where it's going to be pretty noticeable, and you'll be pretty far below your average. We do still have some warmer temperatures there for the southeastern United States, though. And then also some warmer than average temperatures for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, Wyoming, South Dakota, and Nebraska. We're going to move on to the 16th though and things start to really warm up there for the central United States. But we're still pretty cold for the western United States and those really cold temperatures are starting to creep even further south. So California, you're feeling some pretty well below average temperatures. And according to this model, even the east coast and the southeast coast is starting to feel pretty far below average temperatures with 4 to 8 degrees below average for North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, D.C., Delaware, New Jersey. But again, I agree more with the European on this one, and I don't think it'll creep that far south. But Georgia, South Carolina on this model as well, all pretty far below average. And a lot of those, uh, Ohio, Indiana, uh, Illinois, Michigan, into the interior of New England, were also pretty far below average on the GFS. We're going to move on to the 17th, and you can see the western United States is starting to really cool down as everything starts to move east. And then the east coast of the United States is still pretty far below average by this point, but things are starting to get warm as you head pretty much west of the Appalachian mountain range. And that's pretty much what the Europeans showed as well. So they're in pretty good agreement with that, that we will start to see this warm up right about the 17th into the 18th. And then things are going to creep out to see, at least as far as those below average temperatures go. And we're going to see a warm up in the east after this point. And that's going to kind of be the pattern flip. The next big cooldown after this one that I can really see in the foreseeable future, and there might be one before this because it's such a long range, things could change, but it looks like there's going to be a time frame in early September where we might see a cooldown. Uh, the European Ensemble model has been showing this. I think it's like right around the 7th, so right in that beginning time frame of September, it's possible that we see another cooldown. Now we have one more frame to show here on the 18th according to the GFS and you can see a lot of those north central regions of the United States get cold again so North Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota we're all starting to cool down again and then the west coast is starting to warm up again as well as the eastern United States especially the the northeastern United States where we see above average temperatures in the southeast we're still seeing slightly below average temperatures but again I don't think that'll be too noticeable and I do agree more with the European model so really, I don't know how far south these temperatures will go, but I'm pretty sure they won't go much further south than Virginia and Kentucky and Missouri. But the GFS could always be right, and it could happen. But I'm siding more with the European on this one, and that's usually the way to go, to side with the European model, as it is the better model. But really a pretty cool pattern here for the eastern United States 
in in the middle portion of August here. So we're seeing some cool downs here. It's because of that negative NAO, and that's the North Atlantic Oscillation. And when that goes negative, usually we do see cold temperatures pretty persistently. So it's going to depend on if that goes positive or not, you know, how much of a warm-up we do see for the United States. But if it tries to stay negative through fall time, expect some colder than normal temperatures. And that would certainly affect my future fall outlooks that I make. If we do see the NAO continue to show negative values, that's going to really contribute to a lot of cooler temperatures for the United States. And that's what we've seen these last couple of weeks where we've seen these little troughs try to dig into the United States. That's kind of the summer version of a negative NAO. In the wintertime, though, that would be much different and very, very cold. That's what we've seen in a lot of winters in the past, like I, I believe in 2009 to 2010, 2014 to 2015, those were some pretty serious negative NAO winners. I'm pretty sure 2009 to 2010 is one of the most popular negative NAO winners. So if you remember that winter at all, you know that it was pretty crazy. And that's what happens when you get a very serious negative NAO throughout the winter. That's not anything we've had in the last winter or I think even the couple of winters before that one. So it's due to happen. And when it does happen, we will have a very, very cold winter and exciting winter. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Anyway, guys, have a great week.